I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Yes, we're doing a cowboy film today. You see, with the era of the American West, cattle ranching and cowboys disappearing ever further into the distant past, new movies depicting that era are growing ever fewer and further between. But today, let's look at one of those movies. The ostensibly steampunk action adventure, Wild Wild West. Released in 1999, Wild Wild West is loosely based on the 1960s cowboy spy show, The Wild Wild West. Will Smith stars as Jim West, an army captain tasked with bringing a confederate reject to justice. But when West meets Artemis Gordon, the mission takes a turn. This movie reunites Smith with Men in Black director Barry Sonnefeld, but wasn't as well received, and even won several Golden Raspberry Awards. But is it really so terrible? Well, let's find out as we join Captain West and Marshall Gordon for a wild, wild ride in... Wild Wild West. Meet Jim West. He's finally got the girl. When his official quarry rides into town. Former Confederate soldiers under General McGrath and Captain West has been on their trail for quite some time now. We meet the other players in this tale. McGraw himself, with whose men Captain West was just dealing, and an undercover US Marshal. And all comes crashing together, while another player looks on from afar. Dr. Arliss Loveless, a southern roboticist, for lack of a less anachronistic term, for whom the Confederate surrender scant years prior still stings. But what does he have to do with General McGraw? Stay tuned to find out. West is summoned before the President, but this is not the President. In fact, this is Artemis Gordon, US Marshal, follower of science and technology, such as would be in the late 1860s, and master of disguise. The real President Grant gives our heroes their mission. And off to New Orleans. To infiltrate a party where they aim to intercept General McGrath, who is suspected of kidnapping several scientists and threatening the President. But in fact, Loveless is the host tonight, and it was he, not McGrath, that kidnapped those men. At the party, West and Loveless exchange unpleasantries, General McGrath gets his orders, and Captain West makes a horrible mistake, and an unlikely escape. Elasticated rope. Never leave base for a mission without it. It's got a thousand uses. Most of which are either elastication or rope, but still. This is also where we meet Rita Escobar who is searching for Professor Guillermo Escobar, her husband. Though we won't find out that particular fact until much later in the movie, but I'm mentioning it now because it bears little to no influence on the story. But oh dear, McGrath's men are in for quite the shock. As I mentioned, the Confederate surrender is still a recent wound to Dr. Loveless, who uses McGrath's men as target practice for his steam tank, and shoots McGrath for observing the surrender. West knows of this machine. Come now, friends, and hear the sad tale of James West. West grew up enslaved, but managed to escape to a First Nation reserve where he was raised. When he came of age, he heard that his birth parents had been freed, and were living in the town of New Liberty. But by the time he reached New Liberty, a steam tank similar to the one that just slaughtered McGrath's unit wrought devastation upon the town. As was told, General Bloodbath McGrath was the culprit, but we now know that it was in fact Loveless himself that was responsible for this evil. And Rita knows where Loveless is headed. Unfortunately, the hunter soon becomes the hunted, and in a panic, Rita gasses them all. <sighs> panic. 
does terrible things to your rationality. But you know, sometimes you want to be kind to a villain who's clearly no threat. Try and play him up a little. And the nightmare doesn't end there, as West's impetuousness leads to a run-in with a magnetic saw blade, which isn't so difficult to escape. And when removed, the collar leads them to Loveless's compound, and a rather large mechanical arachnid, which has just reached promontory point. Yes, friends, Loveless intends to avenge his beloved confederacy, returning to the British, the French, and Mexico, the lands that made up the United States of America, and whatever wasn't claimed shall be his. All he needs is President Grant's signature, which is easier said than done. But what's this? Jim West seeks to divert attention and free his compatriot and the other prisoners. While Loveless's prisoners are freed, the man himself escapes on his spider, which is a lot less of a problem for a prototype glider. But Loveless was prepared. Loveless's gunner, Munisha, shoots down the glider, which crashes onto the deck of the spider. West is dropped into the engine room, fights off the engine room crew, and has a showdown with Loveless, ending with them hanging from a chain, and West sending Loveless to his doom, while our hero catches another chain to climb back on board, and all of which we've had to skip, because YouTube. And so our movie ends with our heroes riding off into the sunset on Loveless's giant mechanical spider. So that was Wild Wild West. And actually, I'm going to put this one into my house of love. Now this is a good old fashioned big dumb action movie. The kind of popcorn blockbuster that the 80s would have been proud of. And it features the two protagonists from Road to El Dorado, so is any good? Well, let's start with the performances. And Will Smith carries this movie, his big damn hero moment. And Kevin Klein makes a great foil as Artemis Gordon, and works the disguise as well. And Salma Hayek's Rita, though little more than eye candy, does turn in a performance here, which brings us to Kenneth Branagh's Dr. Loveless. Superficially charming, but collapsing into wild-eyed fury far too easily for my liking. There's something very off about the character, and it makes my skin crawl. The effects are very late 90s. And after 20 plus years, one can see where digital compositing would have looked so much better. And the movie flows well enough. Fluid from scene to scene. But there are a few very uncomfortable scenes. Plus, the cross-dressing is a lot less funny in the modern age. So just turn off your brain and enjoy, right? Well, not quite. The plot is rather thin, and the reveal that Loveless was the one that killed West's parents feels manipulative and cliché. But it is a big, dumb action movie which invents technologies decades if not centuries early, and it's only about 96 odd minutes plus credits, so it's no great undertaking. Ultimately then, it's big, loud, and forgettable, and if you like the series, you might be more than a little offended by this movie, but Wild Wild West is a wild wild ride on a giant mechanical spider, and you know what? I'm okay with that. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you happy days, and happy trails. So long, partners.
Hey folks, Funky again. If you liked the video, you know where that button is. But why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!